Hi, I'm Thomas of iCollect. Today's featured creator of collectibles is known for his terracottas and jiangshis. Now, there's also a giveaway and details are at the end of this video, so make sure you watch till the end. Let's go meet the toy artist, sculptor and the raisin slinger. I'm Daniel and I create sculptures and art toys. So I'm pretty much a toy junkie, right? I think toys and action figures have been a part of my life for as long as I can remember. In fact, my first toy as a kid um, was this green ghost action figure from Ghostbusters. And as you can see, this is that very same figure from all those years ago. I started uh, kit bashing and customizing action figures when I was around 15. And you know, back then I had a collection of Star Wars and wrestling figures. And I tend to like, you know, the more fringe or secondary characters compared to the main heroes. So things like, you know, second or third tier wrestlers or even, you know, like the weird Star Wars alien that uh, appeared for like five seconds in the movie. And the toy companies weren't always making these characters. So I decided to make them myself. That's how it started out. Later on, I discovered, you know, um, the world of art toys where artists were essentially creating their own original characters in the form of a toy. So I decided to give that a go and making my own characters kind of gave me a different sense of uh, joy and fulfillment. Uh, so resin slinger is just a silly term that I use that you know quite accurately describes the process of making something in resin. So when I first started out, I was literally slinging liquid resin into these uh, silicone molds to make these figures. And I, it, it's a really kind of a chaotic and unpredictable process. So I kind of imagine myself, you know, as this like a gunslinger in the Wild West, you know, like. Um, Brave New World, Uncharted Territories kind of thing. So a lot of my influences come from, you know, pop culture, uh, as well as folklore and fairy tales. Things like old Saturday morning cartoons, comic books like, you know, X-Men, Spawn, uh, movies like Star Wars, um, pro wrestling as well as you know books uh, be it comic book or otherwise you know I like authors like um, Roald Dahl, H.P. Lovecraft, Edgar Allan Poe so I kind of like um, you know themes that are kind of macabre and maybe a little bit deviant but at the same time I think it's important that these things also don't take themselves too seriously it mostly starts with a concept in my head and you know that could stem from something that I come across in life whether it's an image or an idea. From there I flesh out the concept further by you know doing research and mostly that's on the internet or in books. Once I have a general idea about what I'd like to create then I start sculpting. So once the sculpt is complete then it's off to the factory for production. Um, the production pieces are sent back to me unfinished and unpainted and from there I can clean it up and assemble it as well. After that, I either sell them as blank unpainted pieces or I paint them up. So for some of my pieces, I chose to embed or insert magnets into them and I find like this creates an added um, level of playability and posability. So some of my original characters early on you know, consisted of a series called uh, A Curious Panorama of Corporate Utopia. And basically I created these um, series of characters while I was in business school. So it was kind of like my weird skewed perception of what the corporate world would be like. They were all based around the five C's. And I don't know, for, for better or for worse, I didn't end up going into the corporate world. But those were like my first uh, original characters that I made. And then later on, I also created a series called uh, Saikang Warriors. So for me, that was, you know, my love letter to uh, blue collar workers in Singapore. 
Uh, when I first started creating you know, my own original characters, I began to realise that a lot of my influences, things that I was exposed to, they all came from the West. But at the same time, you know, I wanted to create things that are more culturally relevant to my Asian heritage. So that's where all these characters come from. Um, I personally love like zombies, you know, monsters, creatures, everything in between. And from like an Asian context, uh, when you think about zombies, the closest association would be, you know, the Chinese Jiangsu. So the Fortune Twins were kind of inspired by, you know, um, vintage illustrations and posters of um, prosperity babies that you'd see during Chinese New Year. And so I conceived these Fortune Twins as you know, these siblings who are kind of uh, mischievous deities. If you're familiar with Chinese um, traditions, right, during Chinese New Year, uh, if you've got a Fu, which is the Chinese symbol for uh, prosperity or good fortune, you're supposed to invert it and that's meant to like bring in good luck. But that kind of always didn't really make much sense to me because when you invert the Fu, it seems like luck is flowing out. So that's why like the Fortune Twins are kind of polar opposites of each other. Mei Mei, who's got the upright Fu, is actually the bringer of luck. And Titi, who has got like the inverted Fu, is meant to bring good luck away from you. The Terracotta Warriors kind of came about from my interest in um, stop motion film, particularly with Ray Harryhausen movies. So he's the guy behind, you know, classic movies like um, Seven Voyage of Sinbad and uh, Jason and the Argonauts. And in these movies, you know, mythical beasts, uh, creatures, and even undead skeletons come to life and battle the heroes. So I always wondered, you know, what if, um, you know, Sinbad or, or Jason had ventured into the Far East instead? and you know encountered like a whole army of these reanimated terracotta warriors. Well, I'll definitely have to mention um, these collaborations that I've been doing with this amazing Taiwanese artist, Fufu Fanny, who also happens to be my girlfriend. So her style tends to be um, on the cuter side and normally when we collaborate, we mix and match different parts from our existing characters to create figures like this. Most recently, I've also had the good fortune of collaborating with um, Action City and Disney to create, you know, this Mickey Jiangsu. And for me, you know, it's been like an amazing experience working with um, these two companies to bring the Mickey Jiangsu to life. I mean, it's not every day that you see um, Mickey representing um, Asian culture and heritage uh, in this manner. And, you know, um, that really hits it home for me. We've come to the end of today's episode. Thanks to Daniel, he's giving away one of his creations, which is this Jiangshi figurine, to one of our lucky subscribers. Now to win this, you need to first subscribe to iCollect. You also need to leave a comment to qualify. Now this contest opens on the 30th of November at 8 p.m. Singapore time and ends on the 7th of December, 8 p.m. Singapore time. Now, winner will be selected on the 7th of December at 8.05 p.m. sharp, Singapore time. Now, we will post the winner at the description of this video and the winner will have one week to get in touch with us to claim the prize. So remember to check back when the contest closes. This contest is organised by iCollector, not by YouTube, and we will be responsible for the contest and ensuring the winner gets the prize. Now, more contest details and rules are listed below at the description. Make sure to read and good luck. Show us your like if you have enjoyed today's episode, share and yes, subscribe. Now, whether you are a collector, a creator of collectibles or a business that curates and sells collectibles and would like us to feature you, please don't hesitate to contact us via this email address. Till the next episode, this is Thomas saying cheers and bye for now.